But first, we're joined by the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock. Thank Morning. you very much for being with us uh, this morning, bright and early at conference. Great to be here. You've got an announcement today, haven't you? What is it that you're planning to do? Well, we're going to start the largest hospital building program in a, in a generation. Uh, we've announced that we're going to be rebuilding 40 hospitals right across the country uh, and of course recruiting the people who are going to work in them. We, we, we care deeply about making sure that the NHS is there for you and for your family and is sustainable into the long term and so we're putting 13 billion pounds extra additional money into this plan we can find the money, it's not coming through PFI or any of those sorts of schemes that have been used in the past. We can find the money because the economy is strong and this means that we can rebuild our NHS. So, you know, if you're in one of those hospitals in, in Harlow or in Whips Cross in London, for instance, where, you know, the doctors find it hard to get around the patient because the building's too small or where the roof's leaking and dripping, then we're going to rebuild those hospitals. Um, the six that will start straight away the rest will get the uh, we'll, we'll start the development work right now. Um, so I want to get into some of the specifics of this announcement. Mm. You were saying that the six hospitals that you're going to start uh, straight away that you've kind of already earmarked that money from the Treasury for. So are these new hospitals or are they just rebuilding hospitals that are already there? Uh, yes, in, in many cases they are rebuilding hospitals that have been uh, crumbling essentially. You know, take Whips Cross, which the Prime Minister visited a couple of weeks ago. That hospital is 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 almost a hundred years old. It's totally inappropriate for modern and care and as it the needs... father in Whips Cross Hospital. Well, I understood his frustration, <laughs> uh, you know, as, as did the PM, and it was, uh, you know, we couldn't say at the time, but we're going to rebuild this hospital uh, and also employ the extra people who are needed in, in to run the services. So, is it new money and where's it coming from? So, all of this is new additional money to the NHS budget. It's coming from the Treasury, it so ultimately borrowing? comes from it comes from taxpayers. And the reason that but does we it come can... from increased borrowing? Is that... Well, no, it comes because because we've got record numbers of people in work, so we've got more people paying income tax, so the tax revenues are coming in, so it's coming because the economy is strong. It's one of the things about good public services, you can only fund them with a strong economy. Um, OK, so those are the six initial ones that yes. you've planned. Yes, they're, they're immediate, their plans are already ready and they have got the go-ahead to get that building going. You also say you want another 34 hospitals and you promised £100 million. Pounds. Yes. Now, I'm not an economist, but I don't think that's enough, is it, to that's build 34? So, so where's the rest of the money coming from? So the rest of the money will come in the future. What's happened but in where, the no, past... But where's it coming from? Well, that will also come from uh, taxpayers, but it'll come so in the, the future. So the government We're committing in the future now. Yes. will work out how to... Yes come up with these extra billions of pounds. Yes, that's exactly right. And let me well, why explain... Why are you announcing them now? Well, then? I, I, wouldn't, it be a bit, wouldn't it not be a little bit more honest to say, look, we've got six hospitals that we're building, we've committed this money, I mean, 34 hospitals in the future, paid for, you don't no, really I'll know. No, I'll tell you, let me explain, because this is an incredibly important point that you raise. In the past, of the last generation, hospitals have been largely built using PFI. This was a really bad way of building hospitals because then the hospitals are hamstrung with the PFI debts for years to come and also constraints on how you can use the hospital. You know, if you want to change anything, you have to go and find the PFI lenders and the, and the, and the company and ask them. Instead, we're building these hospitals on the government balance sheet using taxpayers' money. But you can't and say how 34 of the 40 will be funded. I mean, no, I can. See, okay, I can. How and will let it be me explain. Let me, I was coming on to that. So instead of having this sort of piecemeal approach where whoever can get a PFI contract can then build a new hospital. We're going to have a strategic approach to replacing hospitals over the years ahead. We're going to have what's called a health infrastructure plan. And in the first five years of this plan, we're getting on with the projects, the six projects I outlined. But we're also giving the seed funding now for the next... That's 100 million pounds, yes, by the way. exactly. For 34 hospitals. Yes, for the, for the planning, the design work, the business case development, so that the next uh, set of hospitals that need to be rebuilt can be ready to have that investment uh, over this decade. So it's so will it be now. private investment? Nope. No, taxpayers no, money. all taxpayers' money. Yes, I'm so still the, really confused as to where this really money is coming from. It's really straightforward. It's really straightforward. We're talking about strategic plans, yes. seed funding, yes. but you can't tell me where the money is coming from. Yes. The Treasury hasn't given it to you yet. No. The Treasury is committed to supporting these projects. We have to, des we well, have to design them. Well, there's six hospitals now. No, no, no. 
the government is giving the go-ahead to the all 40 and we're giving the the, the the money immediately to the first six and for the the following 34 we're having a strategic pipeline so that we can what does that mean strategic pipeline? let me let me i'm explaining but you keep interrupting it's, it and that makes it harder to explain it means that we're giving the funding now to get the project ready so that we can get it built in the years ahead you can't build hospitals just by saying we, we're clicking your fingers and saying we're going to rebuild that one. OK, there are hospitals around the country. Take Dereford in Plymouth, a hospital I know well. I've done a night shift there. Brilliant local MP, Johnny Mercer. That hospital is clearly coming towards the end of its life and it has problems uh, in terms of the physical infrastructure. But it, they haven't got a plan that if I said, you know, here's, here's the money, f several hundred million pounds, for them to immediately get going and rebuild it. They need the architects, they need the design work, they need the planning, they need to make sure they've done the business case so the money's spent wisely. I'm giving them the seed funding now to do that work so that, okay. so that over the next decade they can rebuild. They don't need the new hospital immediately, but they need to know that it's coming. Okay. That's why I describe it as a strategic approach. Instead of, you know, a piecemeal who's ready to build a hospital, I'm saying, We'll get going immediately on the first six and, the, and then we'll have a pipeline for all of the rest over the decade to come. Uh, as a nation, we're getting fatter. Is it time to extend the sugar tax? Well, the evidence on the sugar tax is incredibly powerful and it shows that there's a very significant reduction in the amount of sugar that people it's uh, drink. It's working, it's successful. Uh, we've said that we will have a formal review next year. We said when we announced the sugar tax uh, a few years ago that we would review it in 2020. So uh, earlier this month we published, well Public Health England published uh, information, published evidence on how it's working. You know, it's, it's brilliant that the amount of sugar in sugary drinks has fallen by a quarter since the sugar tax was brought in. I think that's absolutely terrific uh, and, um, and, and I'm glad that it's, it's working. So would you like it rolled out further? Because what it also shows is that while, like you say, the sugar in sugary drinks is going down, manufacturers aren't doing the same, are they, on other products that haven't been taxed? So well, would you like to see it extended to other unhealthy sugary products? Well, this is a question that we're going to address uh, in a year's time. Well, what's your gut feeling? Well, my Sounds gut like feeling... Sounds like you think it's a good idea. My gut feeling is that it's working. OK, thank you. Um, now, I just want to go through, talk a little bit more widely, uh, away from your brief, about some of the other things, because, of course, you know, we've sort of spoken when you were uh, running for leader yourself. A lot has changed since then. And I just want to look back at some of the things that you said when you were pitching for the top job yourself. So in June, uh, when you were running to be Prime Minister, you said, no deal is not a policy option available to the next Prime Minister. The real choice is between leaving with a deal or no Brexit. Is that your view? Well, I think that, uh, I've said before that I think that, um, that I was surprised after saying that by the Parliament not voting in the summer uh, to prevent no deal. But clearly Parliament has made its view clear in the Ben Act that was passed at the start of this, uh, start of this month. Um, I think that the best way to leave is with a deal, absolutely, I've always thought that. But we've got to get Brexit done so that we can get on to delivering on all the other things, like the NHS, which I'm responsible for, like on mm. schools and the extra 20,000 police. So is, so, your, so I, is I your view then that I, I can tell that you think leaving with a deal is the best option, yes. but what's the choice? Is it between leaving without a deal and not leaving at all? Well, we've got, or is no deal, do you think, realistically on the table? We've got to get Brexit done. I think, yeah, absolutely no deal may well happen. So you've changed I'm, your mind then? Yes, I have, and I said that uh, um, a few weeks ago. I I absolutely think um, we have got to get Brexit done. I made that, that's the other argument I was making when I was running. We've got to get Brexit done so that you can then get on to all of the other things. You know, the public is deeply frustrated with all these rows about Brexit. All the noise in politics at the moment and, uh, and, and all, of the, uh, all of the language. Let's get Brexit done because then we can get on to things like the NHS which unite people rather than divide them. You mentioned the Ben Act. This of course is the move by MPs to try and compel the Prime Minister to extend if he can't get a deal rather than leave with no deal. Do you think there's loopholes on that or do you think the Prime Minister will have to obey the Ben Act if he can't get a deal? Well the, clearly the Prime Minister and the government uh, will obey the law. 
but we've got to also we've got to get Brexit done. And the test, so what does that mean? The law, does that mean well, asking means, for an extension if you can't get a deal? Well, the, the best way through all of this, Sophie, is to get a deal. Yeah, I, I know and, that's what you and think. That's what I know we that's should what you think. be. But that's what, what we it, are working towards. But what if you uh, can't? Well, we've still got to get Brexit done as a country, right? There are people out there who say, let's have a second referendum. But the, that doesn't solve Brexit at all. That would just prolong the row for, for even longer. And there's people who say now, people who just say, we'll just revoke. Well, that wouldn't solve this political row about Brexit in this country at all. We're a democracy. Okay. And in a democracy, when the people vote, whether you agreed with them or not, you follow the result and they voted to leave and so people like me who voted remain in that referendum we should listen to the result we should act on the result and let's get this done and then we can move forward you talk about uh, living in a democracy um, we're a parliamentary democracy of course and during that campaign you also said to suspend Parliament explicitly to pursue a course of action against its wishes is not a serious policy of a Prime Minister in the 21st century. It undermines parliamentary democracy. It goes against everything that those men who waded onto those beaches fought and died for. I mean, I'm not dredging up quotes from the distant past no, here. I, this I, is I, things you said a couple yeah, of months ago. And, I mean, and this proposal at the time was to, was to prorogue, suspend Parliament all the way through to the 1st of November. And the instead... Supreme Court stand and, against you. Well, Instead, we, Parliament sat for the first two weeks in September. It passed a law during that time. So Parliament has been able to express its view. It's sitting, it's sitting next week, even whilst Conservative Party conference well, is on. Uh, because so, the Supreme Court but, ordered it to sit yeah, again. It's you know not what? because Parliament's the Prime Minister Parliament's come back. back um, the back end of last week, and it'll be there this week. Last week, it, it sat for two days after the Supreme Court quashed the prorogation decision. We didn't. We only had one vote on one thing, which was whether to have a recess this week. There was there was no um, there were no votes on substantive issues, the, and the, there's a reason for that, and that is that the moment to get a deal to deliver Brexit with a deal is the European Council on the 17th of October. Until then, we don't have a new proposal to have a vote on in Parliament. We've well, let's had talk. hundreds and hundreds of hours let's of debate talk, in Parliament. Let's talk, about so some of the let's, things, let's talk about some of the things that Parliament did talk about um, in that time uh, when it was recalled, uh, because there was some very passionate debate about abuse, about MPs feeling worried for their safety. Um, Paul Sheriff, Labour MP, said, we stand here under the shield of our departed friend, Joe Cox. Many of us in this place are subject to death threats and abuse every single day. Let me tell the Prime Minister they often quote his words. The Prime Minister replied, humbug. Is it humbug? Well, uh, you're actually only partly quoting it, so it's a bit unreasonable, Sophie. You've what, got else? To... what else? What because... else should I have put in? Well, you should have the, fi the final sentence okay, of the so, question. Okay, so let me tell the Prime Minister that they also quote his words, surrender act betrayal traitor. Is that the bit you mean? Yes, because the... Look, I think it's totally reasonable to call the, the, the Ben Act a surrender act the surrender act right and that's because that literally describes is it humbug what it though? does is it humbug well the, the I mean, prime minister very there, dismissive the, isn't it the prime minister there was referring to um calling the ben act the surrender act he thinks that's perfectly reasonable i think it's perfectly reasonable um and that is the uh, and that's the debate that was that was going on in the commons at the time i wasn't actually there for that exchange mm. um but the the it is reasonable to call this act that makes it so much harder for the Prime Minister I'm, to negotiate not, I, a I, surrender I understand act. The, the, what you're saying defending those words, yeah. but there is a wider concern, isn't there? I mean, Jo Swinson has had to report threats to her children to the police this week. Jess Phillips has seen someone trying to yeah. smash a window that, that, in her yeah, office. Yeah. Yvette Cooper's daughter yeah. has come out saying that she's scared every single day yeah. because they have an explosive bag to catch the mail at their family home. Yeah. And the Prime Minister stands there and says, humbug. Yeah, he was, but it's, he was referring to but something else. it sounds else. dismissive, doesn't it? He was referring to something else. And are, you, are you dancing on the head of a pin here? No, I'm not, because it's incredibly important that we have a high-quality public discourse. I care deeply about that. I've always tried personally as a, in, in public life to use reasonable language and to make the argument rather than just use the rhetoric. That's, I mean, all of us uh, get uh, overexcited from time to time, but that has always been my approach and yeah, I think you'd agree with that. The, the challenge is how do you make sure that on all sides 
some of this aggressive language is de-escalated. You know, as uh, uh, in a way, as conservatives, we have uh, you you grow up with having this sort of language thrown at you from the other side, um, and that doesn't excuse it on any side, by the way. But you know, when you have some of the stuff that John McDonnell has said in particular, and I single him out because he is. The he, he is the most aggressive. I don't want to get into an Nor argument here about who is worse. I no. just think it's a bit of a race to the bottom. No, absolutely. Amber, the, Amber if you just let me finish, because that is exactly the point that I wanted to make, right? Is that I, I think it's incumbent on all sides. Mm -hmm. It's incumbent on all sides. But what I but it is frustrating to hear some of the accusations, okay. obviously, from the other side, but it's incumbent on everybody I'm, to have positive I'm, language. I'm trying to hurry a little bit, because I know we, we have a, a limited time in the, in the interview. Um, just very quickly, um, Amber Rudd said in an interview this week, um, talking about the language that we're coming, coming up, number 10, does incite violence. She urged ministers to consider their own judgments rather than be desperately loyal. Are you considering your own judgments, or are you desperately yeah, loyal? Yeah, my judgment is that we absolutely should use uh, language that tries to bring people together and we should concentrate on the things that really matter to people and this is why we should get Brexit done so we can get on to the things that bring the country together okay. like the NHS. One more question uh, while we've got you. Um, the Prime Minister has been referred to the police watchdog for allegations in his time as London Mayor uh, regarding a businesswoman called Jennifer Arcuri. Are you concerned? Does he have questions to answer here? Uh, no, my understanding is that there's a uh, that there's an investigation. All of the monies, any monies involved, uh, went through proper due process, uh, and this was from a long time ago. I think actually the message that you're going to get out of this conference is one of that's forward-looking, that's positive. It's about the hope that we can bring once we can get Brexit done, you know, and the delivering 40 new hospitals that uh, that uh, that I'm announcing today is an example of this you know we are here to deliver on the priorities that people care about and the NHS education police getting Brexit done so we can get onto all of these subjects that's what matters to people and um, and of course in politics there's always squalls and there's always uh, there's always debates about individual well, stories he's been referred sometimes. To a watchdog, so well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's relevant. Sometimes it, as very well, historic. What really, historic. what really matters is that we deliver for people, so that their hospitals are better, so there's enough people to treat okay. them when they're ill, and to make sure that they have the education, the police services uh, that they need. That's really, for me, what politics is all about. Okay, Health Secretary Matt Hancock, thank you very much for being on the programme today.